Welcome to the Think Fitness Life podcast, Mindset, Exercise, and Nutrition. My name is Matt Gluckman, and my co-hosts are Eric Benchy and Mike Urso. But today, it's just going to be Mike and myself. Um, we like to talk about psychology, the science, behavior, um, and how it can shape your fitness lifestyle. You know, we are just three personal trainers who had a lot of fun in our work and had a lot of fun conversations with each other and our clients, and we wanted to have a format to get this information out to people in a really easy, fun format. Because in the end of the day, when it comes to managing your health and get, trying to you know enjoy your quality of life and longevity, it doesn't have to be as convoluted as it seems. So we're here to simplify things. And that being said, today we're here to talk about complex things. <laughs> no, but seriously, we're going to talk about uh, wearable technology. Um, what can aid you, what can hinder you, what to look for, what is recommended by maybe us, um, and then what's our, what are Mike's experiences with some of this stuff? Because he's our, he's our group uh, test subject. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I am the resident guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you handle it well and you try everything. I love it. So, you know, I think we can, we can start off and we can both agree that the H7 Polar Monitor was probably... At least I know for me, that was probably the first wearable piece of technology that I used in my training and with clients. Yeah. Uh, going back to the early days of quantified self and tracking, I feel like heart rate training was the first to kind of work its way into the mix. And yeah, once Bluetooth became popular um, with the phone and you no longer had to wear like a wristwatch that your, your, your heart rate strap linked up to the H seven came onto the market and the polar H seven was that Bluetooth, you know, I think low, low powered Bluetooth, um, device that allows you to, you know, essentially say you want to do, uh, kettlebell snatches or cleans. And you know, that wearing a wristwatch is just going to bang up, you know, get, get all banged up on the kettlebell. You can now you know, put your heart rate to your phone and just set your phone up on a stand or in front of you and track your heart rate there from a distance, even up to 30 feet without having to wear a wristwatch. So yeah, great piece of technology. I still use it to this day, just used it last week on a, a zone two cardio jog that I was doing just to work on some, um, you know, conditioning and some uh, aerobic capacity. But yeah, hands down, probably one of the the first one of the best or one yeah, of the one best of the first or one of the best yeah still simple super simple but yeah, you know and, yeah and for those who who um don't know what that is it's basically like a, a a bandage strap that comes across your underneath your chest and there's a little um a little electric sensor and probably sends signals to your phone right little bluetooth um right piece in there and it gets it's probably one of the most accurate ways to get your heart rate other than just manually doing it but I find that even just reading about, I remember I was reading about the Apple Watch and maybe one other watch that they said that the heart rate itself, that that feature is actually not that accurate, which is kind of funny. I mean, it has so many other features that are pretty, pretty yeah. in depth, like well, monitoring I can speak sleep. To it a little bit. Okay, I I do have an Apple Watch, and um, yeah, I think you're right. I have a first generation, so mine is not. The, it's the old technology from, you know, what, three years ago or whenever the Apple Watch came out, two, three years ago. Um, yes, it's it's one of those that it doesn't pick up the signals of your heart like the strap does, uh, the electrical signals, but it picks up on the changes of your skin and the pigment in your, not pigment, but the um, color of your skin based on just um, uh, blood that's running kind of through your veins, you know, on your, on the back of your wrist or on the front of your wrist. And so it uses this, um, I don't know, this light technology that penetrates through your skin and checks uh, the changes in the, in, the, in the color of the blood with the pulsing of the, the, the heart. And what I found is it works okay. It's not super consistent. Um, mm. Whereas like the, the, the polar strap has less lag when it comes to, you know, how the heart rate kind of revs up. And then the, the actually, you actually see the reading on the monitor um, of s several seconds later even though you're working really hard, it doesn't jump up. So there's a little bit of a lag. There's even more of a lag I found with the watch. And if there's any sort of sweat, whereas, you know, you have to wet a polar H7 strap and it actually works better when there's um, some sort of like wetness or sweat or water connecting between you and the strap. Uh, that I found that the Apple watch actually works worse when there is any kind of, um, 
sweat condensation or any you know even at the very first signs of sweat i find that the reading starts to uh go a little wacky crazy yeah yeah that's pretty funny because you know they always tell you too like when you do the in body you don't want to do the the in body scanner with anybody with who's been sweating or after a workout or whatever right um but uh, it's funny how the H7 can is supposed to work better w- under those conditions. But so then, what do you use the Apple Watch for mainly? Like the, I, I thought the sleep monitor was really neat when I could talk to my clients and they could show me the graph of like how well yeah. they slept. Yeah, I don't. So the, what I find is the Apple Watch battery doesn't last me long enough to be able to wear it through the night. Wow, you only so sleep actually, for like two hours. You're you're a machine. Yeah, not quite. Uh, I like a solid seven. But uh, I do have to put it on the charging block every night because it usually gets down to like 10, 15%. And partially that is because I don't use mine really. Uh, what I do like it for is if I am using the H7, the H7 can link up to your watch via the Bluetooth. And then I can get my heart rate reading on my watch if I want to. Which That's it, badass. I, so yeah, so it bypasses the um, the uh, heart rate m- um, monitor mechanism that is on the Apple Watch that comes stock, and you can actually override it, and it'll send the H7 um, reading right to your watch. So that's cool. So I do use it for that, but outside of that, I really only use it to like get my text messages um, discreetly and check the time and a stopwatch. I mean, as a trainer who I see you know four or five clients throughout the course of the week, a couple times a week. I use my stopwatch every single, you know, every single yeah. pr- training session, whether it be for time sets or rest periods or whatever it is. I got my stopwatch right there, so that's pretty much it. That the we- I check the weather on it. I-, I don't really use it for the sleep tracking. I don't really use it for right. any other of the the metrics. What I did find out just last week, though, is that it can do HRV um, uh, readings on you, and HRV meaning. Um, heart, rate uh, heart rate variability. Yeah. So have we talked about this in previous podcasts? No, we should probably explain what it is. So yeah, HRV. So you have your heart rate, which is just the, the number of beats per minute um, that your heart is, is beating. The heart rate variability it basically says that there is a time between heartbeats that is measured. And so that time between heartbeats should be uh, slightly variable between each heartbeat. It shouldn't be uh, the same distance or the same, um, yeah, the same, the same time between heartbeats. Um, the, the more variability there is, the higher variability, I should say, uh, the better your nervous system is said to be recovered and the more um, parasympathetic your body is and ready to take on more stress or more strain. And so the Apple Watch has this feature where uh, the heart rate, reading device or mechanism will actually read your heart rate uh, via the breathe app. So anytime you use the breathe app, which is a, you can set it for three, five, or 10 minutes of, it'll actually give you haptic feedback and vibrate on your wrist with this little um, kind of bubble that expands. And it's basically telling you when to breathe in and when to breathe out. And it slows you down to like a five, five or a six, six breath. And what's really cool about that is it measures your heart rate for that three to five minutes, however long you uh, set that for through that app. And then when you go onto your phone into the health app on your iPhone, you can check your HRV for that time period uh, when it was taking your reading. So that's that's a new feature that I just found out about that I don't think was on previous versions. So that's kind of cool. The fact that anyone who has an Apple Watch can get an HRV reading now without having any other kind of technology. That is that is pretty neat. I used to use the um, H7 for that for the heart rate variability. Um, yeah, there's a couple good apps. Um, yeah, HRV uh, Elite, Sweet, Sweet Beat, HRV Elite, Sweet Beat is another one. You, you just got to make um, sure you um, for BioForce for our listeners. You just got to make sure if you're actually interested in heart rate variability, which is actually a, a really cool way to determine whether you should hit it hard that day or you should maybe take it a little bit easier on your workout. And it's not just a mentality thing. It's not just like, oh, I'm feeling like lethargic. Like, oh, I got to push myself through it. It's like, no, you're, you're actually, your, your body is still recovering and this is why. Um, but if you want to do it, you just you download one of those apps, get the H7 Polar Monitor. I think they're only like 50, 60 bucks now, nowadays. And um, yeah, 50, you gotta, 50 bucks. You got to calibrate yeah. it accurately and you got to wake up every morning for like five, six days to calibrate it. But it's so worth it. 
It's probably if I could pick yeah. one piece of equipment that I wish all my clients would would buy, like like after the assessment, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, come. Can you get yourself an H seven monitor so we can just use it every yeah. workout? Absolutely, great, great, uh, great tool. So, what are some other wearable technologies that you've tried out? Oh, um, well, there's a Boston-based company that I have used in the past that I really like. They're called Whoop. Have you heard of Whoop? No. So Whoop is W H O O P. It is a uh, HRV twenty four seven monitoring device. So uh, it has five different sensors on it. I'm I'm not going to remember them all. I know for sure there's a accelerometer, a skin temperature, uh, a heart a heart rate monitor, um, and then two other ones. I'm not not quite sure like, exactly what they do. But this thing is taking in. Uh, I think somewhere around a hundred data points per second. So it's getting a ton of millions and millions of data on you in a very short period of time. And essentially this thing is tracking you 24 seven. So you never have to take it off. It's waterproof. Um, you don't have to take it off to charge it. It actually, um, you have this little small, tiny little battery pack that snaps on to the top of it. It adds a little bit of extra bulk, but it charges it in about 45 minutes to an hour. And then you're good for like two days. Um, so it's great. You never, and then you just charge that external, uh, unit. And, um, it's great because, you know, like I said, it's waterproof. Swimmers can use it. Um, you know, underwater you can, you know, it's, it's just essentially, what I looked at it for at the time, this was a couple couple years ago, was I had it, to, you know, with my clients, it had a dashboard, like essentially a, um, a client dashboard. And so it allows you to track your client's HRV or their uh, daily strain and recovery over time. Yeah, so the Whoop, um, you know, essentially the what I originally had used it for uh, and was looking at it for was because it has a dashboard that you can control. So for example, let's say you have five clients or five athletes on your team and they're wearing one and it's linked up to their phone uh, via Bluetooth and it's sending that data in real time from their device to your computer on this dashboard where you can now view your clients or athletes um, before they even come in for a training session or for their workout for the day. And you can see you know, how good they're recovered or how poorly they're recovered. And then you can gauge how hard you're going to work them out or, you know, either you can push it that day or, Hey, we need to do a recovery workout today because, um, you know, you, you were obviously, you know, not recovered from yesterday's workout or the stress or you didn't sleep. And so it's really cool. Essentially, you know, it's, it's taking your sleep into account. It's taking your, um, your previous day's cardiovascular strain, or, or activity and factoring all those things in with your HRV reading in the morning and then giving you kind of like a recovery score every day. And uh, what's crazy about it is it's one of the best sleep trackers I've ever used. Um, what I mean is it's like it's able to literally figure out to the minute when you're when you actually fall asleep. Um, I guess there's some correlations with your heart rate and how it drops or you know, how the electrical impulses in your body respond to the wakefulness and sleepfulness. And um, it's able to, to the minute, like tell you when you fell asleep and then also when you woke up, when you had different um, uh, sleep cycles throughout the course of the night. So it will, it will identify where REM happened, where more of your wakeful sleep state, you know, was, which may have been more, um, you know, like theta. So it's really, really interesting. Um, all the data you their, get from that. I'm on the on their website right now, and it's it's really in depth, and it's really cool how they've tracked people's progress, and they show that like across the board, people like their members, um, people have um, reduced their resting heart rate by a total of four beats per minute, like on average, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um after, after and this is only after four months and, and it's it sounds like a really great like accountability piece you know right. um increased people's heart rate variability by eight milliseconds added another 41 minutes of sleep per night for everybody like on average um people experienced 60 less injuries people consumed 80 percent less alcohol before bed so like after dinner mm -hmm. and 
I don't know. It just seems it, it seems like a really neat um, idea and concept. It, it's like not only diving into kind of more of the science behind your health, but it's also like it, it's linked to to their system, I guess, as an accountability. Or, or you can send it to like any trainer. Like I could watch if my client was a member there, I could watch all their data. Right. I guess so. You can create a coach profile where you can you can either just self monitor your information if you know what to do with it, or you know, maybe your coach hands it out and now he's tracking it. So yeah, they'll be able to see your data. You'll be able to share what data that they can see and what they, what they can't. Um, That's actually really freaking awesome. It's really cool, I wonder if yeah. they, are they, are they free for the coaches or do you have to pay a monthly for the coaches? Um, you know, that I don't know when I was there. Um, gosh, this was maybe two plus years ago, maybe three years ago, even. Um, when I went to their office in Fenway and met with the CEO there and their, their head sports scientist at the time. And, uh, I got one for free. They wanted me to try it out. Uh, I know their, you know, um, uh, retail price was around $500, 180 bucks, uh, 500 oh, oh. at the time. I don't know if that's changed, but I also know that they have plans now where they don't, I don't think they even sell them outright. I think you just pay $30 a month for a membership and then you get to basically rent it from what i understand interesting yeah interesting yeah kind of that uh, that's a really cool company yeah it's a really cool idea really interesting that the guy who founded the company uh the two founders i think one was uh mit uh i want to see he was like an astrophysicist chris, chris mazder yeah possibly maybe I, I forget uh what his credentials was i think he was one of the youngest guys no not chris mazder he he's a olympic. olympic silver medalist no uh this guy is um Gosh, I, th- I want to say he was like a, I don't know, some some really brilliant guy from MIT or I I, I can't remember his name, but I know Will Will, Will, Will Ahmed, Ahmed is the CEO. Yeah, that's not the uh, not okay. the um, the guy I'm thinking of, but uh, yeah. Okay. Antonio Berton, Charles uh, Herschel, his name. Jer- not not a big deal, Jeffrey Olgin. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, but uh, but cool company. Yeah. So th- those are. You use this one. Uh, you still use this one? I don't use it much anymore. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. So what? What are some ones? Um, what are some other ones you've used? Uh, wow. Well, you know, I've, I actually have used. Because when we were thinking, when we were talking before, and I said the only thing I had used the A7 monitor, and I realized that I used to use a pulse oximeter. Oxim- oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, during my workouts, just because I wanted to see, like, when I was really exhausted between sets, and how, how, like, when I felt like I didn't want to pick up the weight again, I wanted to see, like, man, if, like, if my blood oxygen level comes back up pretty high, I'll just go again, even if I don't want to, like, because I'm, I'm prepared to. So I'd use that and just put, you know, you just put it on your finger, and I don't know how how accurate those are. I never really looked into it, but you know, I could see it go down to like the mid eighties at, at certain points. And then I'd see it pop up to as high as like 98 sometimes. Yeah. So, so for whatever reason, it may be inaccurate, but it was consistently well, inaccurate. Pulse oximeters are interesting. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, you've, you've heard of uh, Wim Hof of course, and his breathing methods. Well, he basically says, you know, most of us should be around like 98 to 99% of uh, oxygen saturation, you know, in, in like at any point in time. And, um, he, you know, when you do his breathing technique or you breathe really deep and heavily, you can get it up over, well, not over, but you get to a hundred percent fully oxygenated. Um, what, what also is, is when you do the breath holds that are associated with Wim Hof breathing, it actually drops down really, like really dramatically into like the 70%. And, um, and it's really interesting. It'll stay down there for a good 30 seconds. It'll drop down and then shoot back up when you do a breath hold because the oxygen is, is you know, essentially being used up in your, in your system. It's really interesting. Yeah. I used to use a can of oxygen. Like it was just, I don't know how to describe it, but it was basically like a, a paint can, but it was just mm-hmm. oxygen. You know, I would, I would breathe it in to max out my oxygen level. And, um, oh, no, it was pretty cool. And you could really tell the difference with, with the pulse oximeter and it could tell when you're super like rich, oxygenated blood yeah. but um i never i never saw the application for using it with clients it was just too inconvenient between sets and stuff yeah, the like only that time I found it and good then was, 
and then I, I tried to, but then people were like super sweaty and it never got right. a good reading. The only anywhere. time I use it now, I do carry one in my bag <clears throat> when I'm doing an initial assessment with somebody and I want to do a resting heart mm -hmm. rate. It's the easiest thing to get a re uh, like a resting oh, heart true. rate without having to put, have them put on a yeah. strap or, you know, any other thing that, that I find to be the quickest, easiest way to get, uh, to get that reading. That's a good yeah. idea actually. Yep. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really wear any other technology for my workouts. Yeah, some um, of the biggest ones. And I've never really tried anything. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the biggest ones that's been around, as you know, for the longest time, is the um, the uh, Fitbit, of course. And the Fitbit is still going strong. It's still like one of the best selling wearables out there because it's simple. It doesn't have, you know, a whole lot of like they they are. It doesn't try to be anything. Yeah, I mean, they it made shouldn't a, be. Uh, the wristwatch one that was more of like a smartwatch, um, you know, similar to an Apple Watch, but I don't think it it did quite the same, and it was still pretty simple in comparison. Uh, but the Fitbit is great because it really helps people get up and get moving. Um, you know, it, it you know basically tells them how many steps they're doing throughout the day. It, you know, it can measure. I think it can measure um like flights of stairs i want to say as well but, yeah because i I had people go on the stair mill yeah and then some, some of the um, just them you know they they can monitor you know calorie expenditure throughout the day and things like that um they have accelerometers on them of course to make the readings a little more accurate some have heart rate variability now that they do on some of those Fitbits. I know some of the Garmin Vivo smarts do that as well, which is very similar to a, a Fitbit, but those things are going strong. And what's cool about them is, is like when you join any app, like say you're tracking your calories and my fitness pal, you can essentially link up um, your Fitbit with your calorie app that you're tracking. And then it'll, it'll tell you actually how many calories you're burning throughout the day to you know see if you're going to be meeting your quota of calories uh in need for the day which i think is is pretty cool so one of the other things about the fitbit and and correct me if i'm wrong here because i don't know too too much about all the wearable technology but i remember my clients who had fitbits they all were connected with each other because they would kind of have like mini yeah, competitions. I don't know if that was like a third party app that they would use or uh, something. I think, you know, I don't know. I know. Um, uh, like, but you could, you could probably do that with even the Apple I'm watch. Sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And you're, and you're, and does your Apple watch measure it steps does. as well? And the information that you, the yeah. data that, it, that you get on these, most of these devices can be aggregated into other third party apps. So, you know, gotcha. read that data out and, present it in a different way or present it in a group format, you know? And, um, so yeah, there's absolutely stuff that you can do with that. Um, but there's so many different choices now. So like, you know, you used to have, um, just the watches or things that go on your wrist, but then people wanted to be even more discreet or they wanted to wear their nice watch while not having to wear this, you know, clunky looking, you know, wearable tech thing. And, uh, they started to make these, have you seen these rings? They're called um, Aura rings. Uh, the, I've seen the ones that make up for a wedding yeah, band. So, so, yeah. Is that it's the same yeah, company? So it's a wearable tech ring and it has, it'll, it'll monitor your heart rate. It monitors HRV, your sleep. Um, and it's, that's yeah, pretty it's sweet. Ring. Like it can replace your wedding ring. Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, yeah. I just, I never liked anything on my, on my wrists while I was working out that, that always bothered yeah, me if something was like my, attached, my Apple watch even that I do a lot of kettlebell training. So it doesn't, it doesn't, right. You, just don't, you don't want to smash it, but also I never like the H seven, like I, I, I like the technology behind it, but I do not enjoy wearing it. It's something about the mentality of having this band around my my torso that just, I know, I know I'm not constricted, but I just feel like well, yeah, I'm a little constricted. Big blown like out lats, right? So you're not, it's not just fit around your <laughs> I, have, I have ALS, air lats, air lat syndrome. My elbows always hit the door oh, frame. Cue up. Jamie, let me get that picture up. <laughs> we need a Jamie yeah, right? Joe Rogan. Right. <laughs> 
I know. We'll, we'll next year we'll have uh we'll do video, we'll have YouTube's and all that stuff. But so okay, so we we like we like the Fitbit and we like the Apple Watch for more heart rate monitoring steps, monitoring sleep, stuff like that. The Aero Ring, that Aura. sounds badass. Yeah. Um if people or Aura Ring. If people don't want to wear watches, that seems like a, another good alternative. And I I like these pieces of technology because they're they're more for I mean they're in the gym too but they're also more for to monitor people's activity at least from my perspective from the training and coaching perspective monitoring their activity outside the gym so if, if most likely people are going to buy that stuff they're going to use it all day long hopefully because um, it just gives us trainers a, a better idea of your activity your sleep and um, just more data on you so that we can better assist you but other than that. I really, I personally, there's maybe one other piece of technology that I'll talk about, um, but you know, the, the rest is yours, Mike. If there's anything that you that stands out that you've tried that you really want to talk about, or if there's anything that like was awful and you want to mention, you can do that um, too. I mean, there's not there's not a whole lot. I mean, just there's so many variations of different watches. You know, like there's obviously there's the Apple Watch we talked about and the the, um, the Fitbit one, but then you also have like the Garmin watches, you've got, um, uh, what is it? The Galaxy watch, Samsung Galaxy watch. And then the, the cool, like the, the techie one is the Garmin Phoenix, which is uh, water waterproof, built-in GPS, uh, you know, HRV, pretty much everything you could think of. This is like a $600, five $600 watch. Uh, does it. That's does it? everything. That's well, nothing. for wearable tech, it's pretty expensive. Um, True, but there's like there's like a ten thousand dollar watch that they that divers have, so it can go like well, super that, deep depth. But that's all it can do. That's all it can do is t- tell, tell time and withstand a lot of well, pressure. So the pressure thing. <laughs> that's and it. Also, it's really hard to monitor heart rate underwater because that water, um, you know, can can interfere with the signal between devices. So true. Um, but you would expect if a watch was ten thousand dollars that it should do more than just tell you the time and, and withstand you know right. twenty thousand feet it's or whatever. Really interesting. So what's so 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 five hundred dollars for this watch doesn't sound yeah, that so, bad, honestly. No, it doesn't. So here's one thing, right? So when you're wearing, we talk about the H seven, which is really great, and there's there's a lot of cool things it can do. But well, yeah, I'm but wearing the problem one right with now. The H seven is is like let's say that you are a triathlete and you do swim and you do want to you know monitor your heart rate underwater well here's the issue with the h7 the h7 doesn't store any data in it all it does is it 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 transmits this to your phone and if you're underwater it won't transmit any of the data so it only tracks your heart rate when you're not in the water Uh, whereas you're wearing a whoop Gotcha. It's going to track your heart rate. It's going to maintain close contact with the skin via the elastic strap. And it's going to store up to, I don't even know, 72 hours of data in it that doesn't need to aggregate to your Damn. device via Bluetooth at, you know, until you have a connection to it. So you can be swimming and, and collecting all that data, and then it can aggregate to your phone um, via Bluetooth when you're, when it does finally gain a signal, you can't do that with other devices. So that's, what's pretty cool about the, uh, the whoop that I think, you know, that, that trumps when it comes to swimming, uh, most devices, I would say for that reason. Yeah. Interesting. That's a good application. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah I mean, you can't other use than the that, there's some cool, water. other cool, small stuff we didn't really talk about. There's, uh, you know, people lose their keys all the time. Right. So some of the wearable, I guess you can consider it wearable technology. There's this little thing called the tile, which is like a key ring device that you hook up to your key ring and it has like a, a wireless kind of Bluetooth signal to it. So you can make it beep or you can make it vibrate or you can track it via GPS. I think you could track it via GPS um, from your phone. You just kind of you know, send a signal out from your, from your uh, phone and it'll ring and it'll, you know, tell you where your keys are hiding or where you lost them, which I think is kind of cool. And and I guess you can consider that wearable tech in a way. Um, some variation. It, it might sneak in there. I'll let it, I'll let it slide. All right. So I got, I got one more that it's not, it is wearable, um, but I want it in a different format. And they, they sell these, the company's called tech scan and they're actually out of Boston as well. Um, and 
TechScan, T-E-K-S-C-A-N. And they have a lot of different technology um, pieces that they incorporate in the different products they sell. But one of the ones I liked is the um, force plate, force production plate. So what they do is they actually put insoles into people's shoes, kind of like a Dr. Scholl's, you know, form fitting. And you would be able to tell on the computer, it would you know, give you a direct reading and you'd look at a graph, kind of like what your force production looks like throughout a movement and where it predominantly is, right? Is it in the front of the foot? Is it in the back of the foot? Is it more um, on the outside of the foot? Is it on the inside of the foot? And what I wanted to do, and I've reached out to the company, um, but haven't heard anything back. Um, so I'm gonna, I just got to keep badgering them. But I would I would even invest in, in a pad that does that, right? Like I want like a one foot by two foot square block of this material and have it be able to Bluetooth to my phone and have somebody, you know, whatever it's an assessment, maybe it's a current client stand and even in the midst of a squat, right? Cause a squat form can look great without load on the system. And then you put somebody at 145 for 10 reps, 135 for 10 reps and they look great still, but their form doesn't start to break down until they're at like those sub maximal or maximal loads when they're doing like two or three. So I would love to be able to break down that part in someone's training regimen and see, wow, when we're maxing out or we're going for submaximal loads, you are so reliant because on your like front right foot and you're barely act, like pushing through your left heel or whatever it may be. But I, I just feel like you lose so much um, awareness as a coach and as a trainer when it's go time, right? When it's more of just like the instinctual habits of that of that client of that athlete um, and how they're going to move through the, that exercise. So I would love if I could somehow have a graph or a, a diagram that shows me where their force is coming from in their legs when they're doing a yeah, deadlift, a squat, whatever. I guess there's so I could see some application for athletics more than anything else. Like a your regular gym goer probably has not a lot of need for something like that unless they have a performance. No, and, and a regular gym or like a, a, a general pop person, for the most part, you can even tell their issues with their squat form already. But yeah, for like an athlete, I yeah. totally agree. Like if you, whatever, like if you if you have an athlete who has amazing skills in the gym, and then all of a sudden, whenever you like go to sub maximal loads, they're they're just not performing accurately. You'd be able to see it, or you'd be able to look at it on a graph rather than just try to stare at their feet in a quarter of a second that you have to examine in that rep. You know what I mean? And then half the time if they're doing a submaximal load, you're too busy um, spotting them yeah. anyway. Yeah. That's cool. Where'd you come across this company? Uh, well, I had thought of that idea for that product like last year and then I'd started doing research to see if someone had already made it and then I found that company and I was like, ah, well, oh well, that's great. You know, now I just need to see if they can make me something and I, I called them actually like a month ago and the lady who would handle like kind of what my what I was inquiring about was, I don't know, on, on leave or something. So I just got to keep reaching out until I can talk to somebody who can help me. But I, th I think that would be so amazing to be able to tell like, oh, wow, you know, you're you're so reliant on your quads. And it might be like, it might only be something like 60, 40, right? Like you wouldn't be able to see that without technology, but maybe they are like 60% loading to the front of their foot and using more quad than hamstring right. and glute. And that would tell you like, all right, well, well you know, we got to keep that, strengthening that, those hamstrings. Just that discrepancy over time, it's not going to have any immediate effects, but over time, that much power, you know, um, deficit, you could catch it at the right. You could be proactive, a hundred percent. Injury, the rate of injury is probably much higher for that individual. For sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's probably the only piece of technology that, um, like, besides the H seven and the pulse oximeter, that's like the next piece of technology that I want to try to incorporate into my my training. But other than that, like, not not really wearable stuff. The only other thing I think of is. I remember when Google was pushing those Google yeah. glasses and I, I thought I was going to start seeing everybody in the gym with like these Terminator esque yeah, glasses um, on. There's this headband called Muse. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's a wave sensing headband that you can no. wear. And uh, essentially it, it kind of, it's, it's like neurofeedback, I guess in a way, if that makes sense. So it's, it's going to 
give you data on yourself and your brainwave state as you're meditating or going through it. So it's giving you kind of real time feed. Uh, Wait, I don't, don't use, you this. use this. No, this is something that I've come across, but I don't, I don't use it. I thought you used something that when you meditated, it would measure um, or something like that. No? no, I've never done that. I've used uh, binaural beats, which help. Uh, binaural beats are um, not exactly wearable technology, but uh, I mean, in a way, it would be kind of like a technology that you send into your headphones while you're meditating or while you're working or doing some sort of um, uh, thought conscious or thought provoking idea. Um, it would, it would, you know what it was, maybe you were describing something Joe Dispenza did to, to measure people or assess people. I think there was something that you were telling me about tech wise that they were able to measure their uh, their brainwaves. You know, they're neuroscientists, so they have way more advanced technology than you can get on the, uh, consumer market. They're using, yeah, they're using some gotcha. sort of, you know, brainwave electrodes, you know, that they're connecting up to your head and monitoring your brainwave states as you're meditating. So, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what was this other piece? Yeah, so the muse, Let's go back a, to the muse uh, brainwave real quick. state uh, sensing headband. And so you wear this headband while you meditate or while you're doing work or whatever, and it gives you neurofeedback. Um, and basically teaches you how to strengthen your ability to focus. And uh, would it, does it, what is it also like, could it be used in a way to identify um, high stressful times and like, uh, when yeah, your so, mind's so, racing, I guess. Well, so if you're familiar with uh, the different brainwave states, um, I think there's generally yeah. how many of them? No, there's, well, there's three. I want to say five. Um, so the the lowest one is delta. Delta is your deep sleep, right? It's your you know most deep most deep sleep. Then you have your um, theta, which is like like kind of like your light light meditation or or you know kind of like sleeping. You're your like light sleep, if that makes sense. Then you have your alpha, which is like more of a deep relaxation type. So we're like mentally, you're you're just really calm, cool, collective. And then you have um, beta, which is kind of like you're you're more awake, you're more mostly conscious, um, and a higher state of reasoning. This is the state. Beta is the state that most of us are in throughout the course of the day. And then gamma is like where it's like the fastest brainwave state, whereas like it's just you know, that's where you're just problem solving and, you know, you know, figuring things out or really in a deep state of thought. So I think, five, yeah. yeah, you, you got it. There's five and you listed them all beta, yeah. alpha, theta, yeah. so delta, they're, gamma. They, they're all relative to kind of the state of wakefulness or sleepfulness that you're, you're in right at the moment. And essentially this uh, muse thing will, tell you which brainwave state you're in and so you can so like you can That's basically so sit there and be looking at this thing and saying like you know i've got to calm my mind down i've got to just think about my breathing and then you do that for a minute and boom you just enter into theta you know out of alpha i have so not you used, used this um, right I, yeah i've seen it being used okay. i've i've um heard people they're 160 yeah. bucks on amazon yeah, right and then there's a muse two that's two hundred and fifty dollars. So the the so the the original Muse is one hundred and sixty to two hundred dollars. I'm guessing that you get it for one sixty if it's used. And then there's a Muse two, and right now that's going for two fifty. But that is so cool. That's like what I'm what fascinates me. Like because they did a study on um, on monks, and when they found that they were sending out high signals of gamma waves, they were kind of baffled because that one was. They don't know that much about the gamma as, as much as the others brain waves. Um, and it wasn't, it was the levels of gamma were a lot higher than what is normally found mm. in, in like a normal human being. So it's yeah, pretty it's a really interesting device. It's um, yeah, it's essentially EEG. So it's, you know, measuring your brainwave state. It's, it's really cool. Um, they, Makes yeah, sense the why it'd be so sale, expensive. You can get the, uh, <laughs> 
the Muse, it looks like for 160 bucks on sale, forty dollars off. So uh, it's actually not that bad yeah. of a price for what it does. That's that's yeah. pretty badass. It's it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Oh, it does. Maybe we can reach out and we'll get them to send us one to try and we'll, we'll like really mail it around so and everybody can has, try it. Listen to what it has. It has a EEG for the brainwave. It has um, pulse oximetry and heart rate. It has an accelerometer on it. It also has a, um, so the you get the heart rate with the gyroscope that m- measures your breath, I guess, or your breathing, the gyroscope, which is interesting. And with all those different tracking um, uh, pieces, you just get a lot more data and a lot more information. That's really interesting. Hmm. And it comes with an Damn. app and a program too. Looks which like look, look, is you know with for all that price, that's pretty good deal considering, uh, as they say on the website, Headspace you know costs three hundred dollars for a lifetime subscription to that. Whereas you can get this, you know, and, and it gives you data during your meditations. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, this is, this thing interests me way more than, than like a, an Apple watch or a Fitbit, but you know what? Everyone's different. Everyone wants to get technology for different reasons, for different goals and um, different issues they want to focus on to improve. So um, it'd be, it'd be unfair for me to say that I would never recommend a Fitbit, but um, you know, since we're kind of wrapping up here, do you want to start with some recommendations? Maybe what would be the best piece of technology for just like an average um, gym goer, uh, general pop, someone who wants to maybe change the, their their habits around and get more acti- activity yes. in through the um, day? H seven, as we as we previously stated, polar H seven heart rate strap. It's like fifty bucks. <laughs> You took mine. That's the only one I was going to recommend. Um, And and then for the app, I would download iCardio. iCardio is a a heart rate tracking app that you can get to link up. And what's cool about it is it gives you, you put in all your data and then it'll determine heart rate zones for you using all of your data, um, resting heart rate and and all those different numbers, which will give you a better accurate. Now you're not going to, most accurate heart rate zones you'll get if you actually do a, um, a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? Test, uh, metabolic assessment, um, on a treadmill. So like a, a maximal mm. VO2 test, that's the best way to get your heart rate zones. And because your heart rate zones, you're also going to get your, and a lot of people don't realize this. We, I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but when you track your heart rate, and this is the reason I suggest, you know, a simple device that can track your heart rate more than anything is because you'll be able to figure out what your um, aerobic threshold is and anaerobic thresholds. And from there, you'll know where zones you need to be working in to burn the maximum amount of fat during your workout. And I think that's really important because most people who are out there are just looking to get lean, you know, burn, burn, not just more calories, but burn more fat calories. And so, you know, getting that data will help uh, make sure that you're training in the proper zone to burn more fat versus burning sugar because sugar is great if you're an athlete and you want, you need glucose as a a fuel source, but otherwise, you know, you want to be as efficient burning uh, fat as possible. And so this is a great way to uh, be able to figure that information out. And that. And if you're someone who has a a sugar craving and a sweet tooth problem, then you definitely want to get an H7 so that you're not just burning sugars. Because guess what? If you deplete your body of its sugars and its glycogen post workout and late night after dinner, it's you're going to be thing craving I tell sugars. Too is when you start to do more zone two cardio and you realize you're burning fat uh, while you're working out, you actually don't crave the same types of sugars and cravings go down. Your body yep. doesn't need to it's use crazy. them as much anymore. Yeah. So yeah, really, really good point. We hope uh, we hope we educated you guys on some wearable technology pieces. Um, on maybe you have a better idea of what you would possibly use for what your goals are, and maybe you have a better idea of what you should get rid of because it's not really helping you. Or maybe you have a better idea of what applications to download in conjunction with your technology to make it more effective. But feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments. Uh, it's thinkfitnesslife at gmail.com. And that wraps it up this week.